Okay, look, I get it. You're sick of hearing the boomer Rocket League advice, the go work on your shooting, go practice some training packs. Yeah, yeah, we all know that's good, but truth is, it's boring. We all know what you're really here for. You want to know what's the secret. And so in this video, I couldn't come up with one, but I put together a list of nine ways to rank up without training four hours a day. Basically, this is going to be a list of quick fixes, things I've noticed from my over 3K hours in the game, as well as having coached almost 2,000 players over the past year. So whether you're watching at Plat or you're hard stuck GC1 and you don't know what to do next, this video will give you a quick list of things you can go instantly implement in your gameplay and hopefully see some results. Also, if you didn't catch it in last week's video, my team just finished completely remastering my private coaching program and are now officially recruiting for our 2.0 launch. As many of you know, the GCR or Grand Champ Roadmap was my live coaching program that helped almost 2,000 plat through champ ranked players rank up in just six weeks or less. But today we've completely remastered the curriculum and our newest coach, apparently Jack, is actually going to be hosting a 60 minute live training for everyone inside the program to celebrate in just a few weeks. So if you're watching between the plat and champ ranks and you want a complete roadmap, to getting GC without having to grind four hours of free play a day. This is for you. DM me on Discord with the keyword climb and we can talk details about coaching. Also to celebrate launch 2.0, I'm giving the first 100 players who DM me $100 off the normal cost of enrollment. So I have my Discord linked at the top of the description below. Once again, DM me with the keyword climb and someone on my team will send you the details. Links down below. Otherwise, enjoy the video guys. Okay, so jumping into the strategies, number one is going to be stop over flipping. Now, this is actually something that apparently Jack was talking about in one of our coaching calls last week. But basically, the idea here is most Rocket League players are flipping a lot more than they need to. The problem is every time you flip, yes, you get a speed boost, so you feel like you're playing faster. But while you're flipping, you're actually committed in that direction and you're kind of locked through the animation for however long it takes until you land. What happens then is a lot of players will get caught flipping, and I even do this myself, during collisions, or in other words, during moments where the ball is changing direction or something new is happening. If you're stuck flipping during these moments, you're not going to be able to change direction. And of course, you're going to react slower than you could have if you were just grounded the whole time. So while this is, of course, situational, take a look at your games and try to avoid flipping if you aren't absolutely certain the ball is going a certain way for an extended amount of time. Just by actually saving your flip and staying grounded, you're going to be able to get to balls way quicker and ultimately make more beats in your games. Number two, take blame. Now, this isn't like a strategy so much as it is just something I've noticed from solo queuing in twos a lot lately. For whatever reason, people out there seem to think that flaming your teammates in quick chat makes them play better when literally the worst thing you can do in a solo queue game is flame your teammates. When you start taking blame and literally just hitting the my bad quick chat after every goal that's scored on you, not only do you take pressure off your teammate and shelter their ego a little bit, you also actually learn from your games. And if you're constantly in the mentality of pointing at your teammates or thinking about what they can improve, it doesn't help you. So just get in the habit of taking blame, hitting my bad after any goal is scored. You're going to learn more from it. Your teammates will play better for it. And both long term and short term, you're going to get a lot better faster. Number three, limit your ranked sessions to 60 to 90 minutes maximum. One of the main problems I see, especially with players who play a lot but don't rank up, is actually queuing too much. The truth is, while everybody varies a little bit, you can't actually focus for three or four hours straight, no matter what you think. From what I found, it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to get locked into flow state or whatever you want to call it, and it takes 60 to 90 for me to start like kind of losing focus. And so if you're anything like me and you can't just 
just queue for three hours without losing focus and starting to make bad decisions. What you should do is keep note of how many games you're playing and literally just stop queuing before the lose streak starts. Seriously, if you just save like those two to three losses that you probably get at the end of every rank session before you quit and you stop saying just one more, you'll probably end every rank session with a lot more MMR. Number four, stop tilt queuing. This kind of goes in line with the third method, but basically if you ever get tilted or you're noticing you're getting frustrated and like kind of impatient with your decision making, stop queuing. Not only will you save MMR in the short term, but also you're going to save out on the fact that when you actually tilt queue, that's when you form most of your bad habits. When most people tilt queue, they resort to their instincts, you get impatient, and this is the time where you're going to start to cement a lot of bad habits. So bottom line, stop queuing if you're tilted, save yourself the losses. Number five, don't play while you're tired. This might sound too obvious, but I think it needs to be said, you probably aren't going to play your best at 3 a.m. The truth is 50% of Rocket League is strategy and knowing what to do and the kind of high level game sense stuff. And the other 50% is the quick decision-making reaction time and using the mechanics you have. But when you play tired, you basically make those short-term decisions and your action time way worse. And you're just making it way harder on yourself to actually win. Of course, everybody's different, but cue while you're actually focused and, and make an honest effort before you go into ranked to think about if you should be playing ranked and that'll save you some games as well. For tip number six, I have stay grounded. From what I've seen coaching players, especially in my coaching program and just casually, people at the lower ranks seem to want to jump for way more balls and commit on way more plays than they should, especially for the plats, diamonds, and champs watching. I need you to understand just because the ball is in the air doesn't mean you have to actually go for it. One of the common strategies you'll see me use in my road to SSL is literally just letting people fly for balls at midfield, letting people burn their boost, give away possession, and then using that to score breakaways. Of course, this stuff is all situational, but the main thing that I like to think about and what I'd recommend you do is especially around the midfield, be really cautious about jumping up and flying for the ball unless you're 100% confident you're going to beat the opponent. Not only will you overcommit less, but the more you'll realize that a lot of the touches that your opponents were getting weren't actually good in the first place. And if you just wait back and let them give the ball to you, you'll get scored on less and you'll have a much easier time scoring goals because you'll just have the ball all the time. Number seven, warm up. Everyone knows warming up is good, but for some reason, 90% of players that I talk to still don't warm up. And just so you know, five minutes of free play air dribbles doesn't count. Any warm up is better than no warm up. So if you can literally just get in free play for five to 10 minutes and warm up a couple of your fundamental mechanics, the stuff that you use most often, think dribbling, think shooting, think recoveries, things like that, you're gonna play twice as fast in your games without actually having to train. Also, just as a quick bonus note for warming up, I just released an updated warm-up routine that I was actually previously only giving to people in my coaching program over in my free Discord. So literally anyone can access it. And if you're not currently a member of the Discord and you want to learn like actually how you can warm up and different drills you can do and stuff like that, my Discord's completely free to join. And of course, you can always leave whenever you want. So if you're not a member, you should absolutely join. I'll have that link down below. Go check it out if you want to make sure you're warming up properly. Moving on to number eight. This is one of the biggest ones from my road to SSL actually, and it's use your corners. What I mean by this is a lot of people at the low ranks get caught in the trap of just trying to push the ball forward. At all times, they're just trying to run down the center of the field, get it as close to the opponent's net as possible and force goals. And while this works sometimes, it's not always the best thing to just try to push the ball towards your opponents. You got to remember the goal of Rocket League is to get the ball around your opponents and score, not just shoot it on their net and let them save it. As you get higher and higher in the ranks, this will become more and more important. But long story short, what I want you to understand is your corner is actually one of the safest places to have the ball. You'll notice in my Road to SSL series, half of what I do is just let my opponents dump the ball into my corner, control my corner boost, and then take 50-50s in my corner to 
to get free breakaways. When you're in your corner, you've got to understand that the angles to score on you are so minimal and there's so much upfield behind your opponent that it's actually a really good place to be in. So get comfortable controlling the ball in your corner, slowing down the play and letting people come to you and overcommit to you. If you can get good at this, and of course it's going to be a little trial and error, you're going to get tons of free goals from people just diving in in your corner for no reason. Finally, moving on to tip number nine, and it's stop solo queuing. Now, while solo queuing isn't bad in and of itself, if you want a free rank boost, I'll tell you right now, one of the quickest ways to do it is to just find a teammate. From what I've seen, there are two or three goals every single game at the lower rank that are just caused by double commits. And when you get on voice comms or just queue with anybody and you're actually playing around each other, you can get rid of those double commits and basically get a free advantage on everyone else who's solo queuing in your games. Long term, I think it's important to learn how to play around your opponents and learn how to adapt and stuff like that. But if you want a free rank boost, from what I've seen with players joining my private coaching program, when they get paired up with a teammate, they can jump anywhere from 50 to 150 MMR almost instantly. Of course, the hardest part here is actually finding good teammates. You can always use the party queue feature in game, but if you're looking for voice comms, I'll do a shameless plug over to my discord. Since once again, we're like the largest improvement discord. And if you join, there are tons of people in the looking for group chat channels that I'm sure are also looking for good teammates to queue with. Or if you have friends to play with, great. Even if they're a little bit lower rank than you, queue with them and you should most likely see a pretty quick rank boost. But there you have it. Those are my nine ways to rank up without training for four hours a day. To recap, they were one, stop over flipping, two, take blame, three, limit your rank sessions to 60, 90 minutes max, four, stop tilt queuing, five, don't play tired, six, stay grounded, seven, warm up, eight, use your corners, and nine, stop solo queuing. If you can pick one or two of those things that you know you should be doing, but you're currently not, or that you're currently doing that you know you shouldn't be doing, either of the two, pick something implemented in your games, and I guarantee you will make progress. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're Plat through Champ and you still want more on how to get GC without grinding four hours a day, DM me on Discord with the keyword climb for coaching or just join the Discord for free stuff. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace, guys.